Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, last week we reacted to the throne of Allah. Today we're going to react to the kingdom of Allah by a rational believer. For us Christians, the kingdom of God is above, but at the same time it is within as well. Therefore, I'm very curious to find out about the Islamic concept of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Allah. Let's have a look. Who is Allah? We want to refresh our Iman. We want to be attached to our Creator. We want to fear nobody but Him. We want to please none other than Him. So who is Allah? Come with me to Surah Al-Hadid, chapter 57 of the Quran, where Allah, He says, introducing Himself to us. Lahu mulku samawati wal -ard. He is Allah who has the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. Yuhyi wa yumeet, he alone is the one who gives life and death. Wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadeer, and he is able to do whatever he wishes. Yusabbihu lahu ma fi samawati wal ardi wa huwa al-aziz al-hakim. Everything in the heavens and the earth glorify Allah and he is the most mighty, the most wise. He just said that everything glorifies Allah. When I read it in the Quran, I found it very, very beautiful that everything, even within nature, is glorifying God. It is just the human being that needs to be reminded of the glorification of God. Ya Allah, hal ta'lamu lahu samiyah? Do you know anybody who shares even one of these characteristics with Allah? Who is Allah? Come with me to chapter 6 of the Quran, Surah Al-An'am. Allah says, وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُو He has the keys to the unseen. No one knows them except him. وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ and he knows everything that is on land and everything that is within the sea. I would absolutely agree with this. Only God is all-knowing. This is what made me question the Trinity in the first place. Because even Jesus, when he got asked about the last day, he said that nobody knows but the Father. Which of course implies an all-knowing God. There isn't a single leaf that falls from any tree except that Allah has knowledge of it. Yes. And there isn't even a grain within the darknesses of the land. Nor is there anything moist or anything that is solid. I believe that in this modern day and age, the analogy of an AI, an artificial intelligence, would make the most sense for people to grasp God at least a little bit. Just try to imagine it like an artificial intelligence that has a count about every single parameter, every single algorithm. We as humans have a limited, a downgraded consciousness. God is pure consciousness. He is the all aware. Except that Allah has knowledge of it. It is written within a clear record. La ilaha illallah. We bring to your attention, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the description of just one of Allah Almighty's creation. He is an angel, the chief of the angels. Angel Jibra'il alayhi salatu wasalam. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw him in his true angelic form. Ahmed narrates in his Musnad that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the companion, he said, رَأَى رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ جِبْرِيلَ فِي صُورَتِهِ رَأَى رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ جِبْرِيلَ عَلَى صُورَتِهِ لَهُ سِتُّ مِئَةِ جَنَاحٍ كُلُّ جَنَاحٍ مِنْهَا قَدْ سَدَّ الْأُفُقِ يسقط من جناحه من التهاويل والدر والياقوت ما الله به عليم. He says the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم saw Angel Jibreel in his true angelic form, and he had no less than six hundred wings, and every one of those wings was huge enough to fill the horizon and cover the skies. One wing spread out covers every cloud covers every star, covers the sun and the moon, covers every inch of that blue sky that we see, one wing. What then can you make of 600 wings? 
And if this is the majesty of just one of Allah Almighty's creation, what then can you make of the beauty and the majesty of the Creator Himself? You cannot make anything of it with your limited human mind. An angel is already a creation of God and has been seen by plenty of people over the millennia. God, on the other hand, as the creator, is uncreated. You have to keep that in mind and understand that we as creations cannot witness something that is uncreated. God transcends everything. I bring to your attention, dear brothers and sisters, yet a second creation from Allah Almighty. Creation. This is the description of one of the angels who are carrying the throne of Allah. Abi Dawood narrates in his sunnah on the authority of Jabir that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Udhina li an uhadditha an malakin min malaikati allahi min hamalati al-arsh ma bayna shahmati udunihi wa atiqihi masiratu sab'i am He said alayhi salatu wa sallam Allah has given me permission to give you O Muslims a description of just one of the angels that are carrying the throne of Allah. He said the distance between his earlobe and his shoulder is the distance of 700 years worth of travel. If that is the distance between his ear and his shoulder, a hand span of a distance for us human beings, what then about the size of the rest of this angel? What then about the enormity of the rest of his body? If this is the size of one of the angels who are carrying the throne of Allah, what then about the enormity of the throne of Allah itself? And if this is the size of the throne of Allah, what then about the Lord, the Lord and the King of the throne? This video reminds me a lot of the throne of Allah, the video that we just reacted to last week. I do understand that there is a purpose for the explanation of size quantity and majesty because it can really humble people and put people into a state of awe where they really want to worship God. For me personally, however, as somebody that was deep into meditation, spiritual practices, psychedelics, etc., etc., human concepts go only so far and can never really describe the majesty of God. The name of C. Today we've forgotten. Today we've forgotten, today you and I think what? That to see I need a pair of eyes. You're wrong, because there are millions around the world that have eyes, but they can't see. It is Allah that allows you to see. Today you think to he, I need a pair of ears. You're wrong, because there are millions around the world that have ears. They're stuck on their heads, but they can't hear my brother. It is Allah that allows you to hear. Today you think to walk, I need a pair of legs. You're wrong, Why so there are screaming? millions around the world that have legs. But they can't walk. It is Allah and Allah alone that allows you to walk. Yeah, okay. Guys, no disrespect here, but all the Sheikh says is that God gives you eyes to see and ears to hear. I fully agree with that statement, but he doesn't have to scream that much. Allah, not you! Bro. Allah! Okay. Not you! Okay. I get it. Allah doesn't need you, my brother! Allah doesn't need me. Allah doesn't need us. And we have to understand because this is aqeedah. You have to know this so that when you worship, you are always humble. When you worship Him, you never have pride. When you worship Him, you never have arrogance. Because you know, at any given point in time, I am where I am only through His mercy. Yes, that is absolutely correct. But screaming and shouting doesn't really sound humble to me. Only through His rahmah, I am where I am. Not because of your own actions. And to know with depth, with yaqeen, with certainty that Allah, the King of Kings, doesn't need anyone. He doesn't need anyone, my brothers. Wallahi, everything you see around you, everything. Today, the Muslims have so much fear in their hearts. Fear. Fear of the kuffar. Fear of the West. Fear of laws. Fear of regulations. Fear of this and fear of that. I would say that fear is the enemy of mankind, not only Muslims. But to know that Allah Azza wa Jal is not in need. Wallahi, my brothers, Wallahi, I take an oath by Allah. You have to come to terms. You have to come to believe with certainty. Why is he so angry? That every single human being, whoever lived, whoever's living, and whoever is to come and live on this earth, 
Wallahi, every single human being, every single jinn, every single animal that walks on this earth, every single bird that takes the flight in the sky, every single fish that swims in the oceans of Allah Azza wa Jal, Wallahi, every single land, every single country, Wallahi, with all their governments okay. and all their military force and all their might and all their science and all their money and all their know-how all with the exception of none every country every tree every grain of sand every mountain every river yeah. every ocean every ocean guys by now you should know me i always give you an honest reaction i just feel screamed at at the moment Allahi, every star every sun every moon every single planet every single angel okay. the billions and billions and billions of angels all of them with the exception of none mikael jibrail israfil all the first heaven the second heaven the third heaven the fourth heaven the fifth heaven the sixth heaven the seventh heaven okay. the ocean above it the eight that carry the flag of allah the hearts of allah why are you so angry are man all are dead nothing moves nothing stops nothing makes nothing breaks nothing gives nothing takes nothing rises and nothing falls nothing harms this really reminds me of the speech of the spartans in the movie 300. Yes, Yet again, I don't understand why he has to scream and shout when he talks about the supremacy of God. And nothing benefits. Should be a humbling Allah. experience. And Allah. Okay. We got it. And until this, yakin and faith is in your heart. That nothing. That everything is dead. Everything. Except Allah! Yeah, he is the ever-living man. Allah doesn't need anything, anyone. No prophet, no angels, no jinn, no ins. He's right. There is no separation in the unity of God. Therefore, there is no lack. He is in no need of anything. So why do you scream so much? We need him! Yes. He's al Hayyul Qayyum. He's the ever-living. True. So you might say, brother, I'm alive. What's so special about that? I'm living. Who would say but that? your living is dependent on his existence. He's the first with no beginning. He's the last with no ending. He's Allah. He is Allah. Yeah. Al-Malik. He's the king. He's the king. He is the one who on the day of judgment, when everything will come to an end, when Allah Azza wa Jal will order the destruction of every living creature, when Allah Azza wa Jal will, Allah will order the destruction, the death of every human, of every animal, of every jinn, of every angel, until there comes a point where there is absolutely nothing in existence except Allah. I would even go so far to say that God is the only one in existence right now. Even before the death of all creatures, he is the only one that truly exists. Our existence is temporal. Our existence has a beginning and an end. God's existence has no beginning and no end and therefore is the only thing real. Okay. Where are those kings? Where are those kings who thought? Listening to this guy scream reminds me of the quote of the Quran, which states Allah does not love anyone who is self deluded and boastful. So you guys might disagree with me, but this Sheikh seems very, very boastful to me. They were kings. Where are the sons of those kings? Allah will call out. Where are the tyrants? Where are the gangsters? Where are the boys that thought he was something? Where? 
Aina Abnaum. Where are the children? Allah will call. Where are they? And then he will ask, Limanu Mulkulion. To who is the kingdom today? Who? Very strange. Nothing will answer. Allah Himself will answer. Today it's to Allah, the one and only. Allah asks, Alam tara an Allah yasjudu lahu man fi samawati wa man fi ard. Don't you see, O oh people, that everything in the heavens and the earth prostrates to Allah? Yeah, that's one of my favorite quotes of the Quran. Shamsu wal qamar, and so does the sun, and so does the moon. Wal nujum wal jibal, so do the stars, and so do the mountains. Wal shajaru wal dawab, and so do the trees, and so do the moving creatures. Wa kathirun min nas, and so do many people. وَكَثِيرٌ حَقَّ عَلَيْهِ الْعَذَابِ And many people will be punished, Ya Allah. Isn't that amazing? From all of creation that's in existence, they are all in submission, all in sujood to Allah, whether we see it or realize it or not. And the that is only amazing. exception is a minority who happened to be from the weakest of all creation. He is man. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Unfortunately, the audio just cut off here. As I said in this video, from me, you will always get honest reactions. This time, Sheikh Muhammad Hoblos was too boastful, too aggressive, too loud for my personal taste. Ultimately, the things that he said about God were correct. God is independent. God is in no need of anything. He is self-sufficient. But I personally was expecting a description of the kingdom of God. And unfortunately, in today's video, I didn't get a sufficient explanation about that. Yet again, I have to say that I will continue with those videos if you guys want to watch them. Please comment below and let me know if there is a wish for me to continue my journey. However, full transparency here, reading the Quran in seclusion by myself was a much more mind-expanding experience than listening to those shakes on YouTube. So please let me know in the comment section if you want me to continue and please post videos that I can react to. Thank you very much. Guys, if you like the video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you very much. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.